Ma uh, um, essences of life. And the Tribalite was one of the ones that was created. It's like a squid-like creature. In the 19th of December comes the Age of Fishes. Now you're really looking at the Earth formulating itself because now you have the Age of the Fishes coming to be where the fish and the vertebrates are in the water. On the 20th, the plants colonize land. In other words, this is where organic life comes, comes on Earth. Now, I know this is a sensitive issue. I know that from a Judeo-Christian uh, ethic, I may not be discussing it the way it would be discussed, but I am a creationist. I believe that there was a creation, a, a God concept that created it. But I also believe that what was created went through evolutionary stages. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, it is so close to a fairy tale for me to believe that the first two humans were born adults on Earth. That's like trying to get me to believe that there was a wolf that ate Little Red Riding Hood's grandmother and was in the bed waiting for Little Red Riding Hood. I have as much chance believing that story as I, as I would a story of a human being being born as an adult. Mm -hmm. And it is time now, at least in my, uh, in, in, in my perspective, is it is hard for me to continue this. Uh, it's like winking at stories so that we can get children to believe them. And I think it's time that we come to a reality that there was an African God concept. And that this concept evolved and went through stages. And the proof of it is that we are going through this stage to this very day. We are getting better. We see our young people smarter today than we were. I remember our adults telling us that we were smarter than they were. And I remember my father telling me that his father used to say he was smarter than his father. And that's because every generation is born with all of the information of the preceding generation. Hopefully, each generation should get better by the nature of the improvement of that particular uh, generation's knowledge and wisdom. So I, I come before you with this information only to share it with you. This is not a belief system. I believe that I, I'm deeply spiritual, but Adam and Eve is just not a story that I can feel comfortable with in believing how I came into existence, and particularly when I see so much evidence to the contrary. On the 22nd of December, the winged insects, uh, the winged insects, the amphibians, amphibians being these re reptiles now, uh, uh, these fishes, mm -hmm. who are now coming up out of the water, and they're using their their fins as sort of like feet, because remember the water is um, is now drying up on Earth, and they need there are ponds created that they got to get from one water level to another and that process sometimes made them go on land and they would just crawl across and those that survived were the ones that continued. The ones that were caught on the land and didn't continue. So survival has a lot to do with the evolution of life on Earth. So the 23rd brings it in the age of the reptiles. Trees begin uh, to grow and then you have amazing growth patterns in, in geometric progressions. In other words, by geometric progressions meaning that Many things are happening. It's not going one, two, three, four, five, six on down. It's going two, four, eight, sixteen, thirty-two. It is by multiples that life is, life is beginning uh, to grow. The twenty-fourth, the dinosaurs are born, and they lived for one hundred and sixty million years. Now, when you think of how long we've been around, look at how long the dinosaurs were around. And look at the arrogance that we have to think that we will be around forever. There are essences of life that once were on Earth. Now, dinosaurs to me is in question. I wonder whether or not dinosaurs existed. I still have, there's still a lot more work to be done in terms of exactly who the dinosaurs were and what they were. And I think that we have, we have got to look at this. On the 26th of December was ushered in the age of the mammals. Now, the difference between a reptile and a mammal is that a reptile has the womb on the outside, which is the egg, and the mammal has the womb on the inside. Because when we left, reptiles are cold-blooded and humans are warm-blooded. So that when these reptiles transformed into amphibians, and these amphibians became mammals, what began to occur was that instead of laying an egg and your womb was on the outside, and it was hatched by the sun, what occurred was that the egg was on the inside. And there was a relationship developed between the soon-to-be-born essence and the mother of the essence. And it was the mother that nurtured, and it was in the womb 
that the God concept and consciousness began to develop and that is why it would lead to, to other kinds of formations that eventually became us as human beings. Mm -hmm. Our original state, we all were once plants. And from plants gave off organisms that would probably later become those essences that would then come out of the water and become. So we all come from a long line of a great creative force. But we weren't born as adults, at least as far as I can see. We were born and we evolved. And, it's, and we don't evolve. Consciousness evolves. We just happen to be the vehicle that consciousness chooses to evolve into because we have all the things that are necessary. And when we talk about some of our, our distant relatives, you'll see how we were chosen quite by mistake. It wasn't done because we were destined. We were destined, but we weren't destined the way the other forms were destined. We, are, we don't have a specialization. Every animal form has a reason to be on Earth. We have no reason to be on Earth. But our reason to be on Earth is that unique consciousness that we then can, can give all others. So although we don't have a specialization, our specialization is in perfecting all of the other specializations. That's why natures were created. And that's why in Africa and amongst Native Americans and amongst many of the ancient civilizations, you have so much respect with nature because they saw themselves as one with nature. And that as you developed yourself through nature and became part of nature, that you could have the all-seeing eye of the falcon. You could be able to smell like the dog. You would be able to have agility like the cat. You would have the essences of whatever they saw within the animal. So the animal has the specialization, but our specialization is to bring that specialization to perfectibility. That's our specialty. And it was a unique God concept that just happened to have come to us because of a situation that happened in the forests of Africa. On the 27th of December, you have birds fly and flowers bloom. When birds flew, and flowers bloomed, dinosaurs perished. Which is an interesting relationship because if you find out why things start to blossom, you'll find out why things died. When you find out why things died, you'll understand why things blossom. Because there's a nature of the law of polarity. When one door closes, another opens. This is the research that our children have to do. But we have to do it from our perspective because it is obvious that Western perspective is not one with nature. And if you're not one with nature, you're not going to understand it. You will see it, but you will not know what you see. You will be, be conscious of it, but you will not be conscious that you're conscious of it. And that's the situation that we're in. Mm -hmm. We are sane people living in an insane society. And the only thing that can happen to a sane person when they try to define an insane situation is they go insane. What we need to do is redo our thinking and begin to look at it the way in which our ancestors did. And I'm not saying you have to go back and do what they did. I said what, the way in which they thought, the way in which they carried their lives is as applicable today as it was back then. I don't, I don't necessarily encourage you to go back and build pyramids, but I do say let's take the math and the engineering that built the pyramids and see what we can do in the 21st century. On the 30th of December, the human ancestors is living in Africa. Now if I can just point to it on the map because this is where we begin to look at things. Here in Africa. What you're really looking at when they talk about all of these continents at one time were connected. You can see how this part of Africa would have fit so neatly in here. You see how Madagascar here fits so perfectly in here. If you move Australia over, you'll see how all of this could have fit. If you condensed all of these continents into one, what we call it in science, we call it Pangea. The ancient Chemites called it Patah, the first hill that came up out of the waters of Nun. This is the story that we see here. So when we're looking at the, the history of the cosmos, what we're actually looking at is the fact that all of these continents were, were connected and that Africa, rightly so, was in the middle. So if in fact Pangea was one big mountain coming up out of this water, chances are it would have been this region right here